Hey, hey friends, welcome to Moxie Gardens. Today we are going to be touring the front yard and the trees in this landscape. A lot of folks are asking me about some of the different trees and I have a lot, um, so maybe too many, but uh, it gives me a lot of privacy. If you can see behind these trees, you can see up here in that top corner, there's a house and there's another home here. So if you're a new subscriber and um, just connecting with me, I have about 10 homes that are around me that uh, kind of leave me in like a fishbowl type deal. So we'll just uh, we'll just start over here. And I really want to start with this red bud because right here to the side is the sidewalk and my son's truck here. But um, yeah, this uh, red bud here is super special for me because I planted it in here. But it's one of those things where it really kicks off the spring and significant, significantly starts um, any kind of color in this garden. So this red bud will actually put off um, little pink i'm not sure why they call it a red bud when it's pink but put off little pink blooms all through um the woody structure of this and all the leaves will fall off in my zone here in zone 6a but uh super special because um that kind of kicks off and i know by easter traditionally by easter when the red buds start um kind of coming to life you know the rest of the garden's not too far behind but um these uh red buds eastern red buds get about 20 to 30 feet tall and about 25 to 35 feet wide and spread so i just continue to limb it up so that it does give it a little bit more sun underneath kind of takes that dense color away you can see underneath here i've got a dappled willow right there um, they've got three of them so they really like the sun and they can bake so you can see kind of the shaded spots in here it's just because i have a little bit more dense uh shade there because of that canopy above but uh Awesome tree, no fuss. Really the only thing it really likes is to keep its, um, the root structure likes to be in shade and um, it doesn't really need water or anything. It can withstand some really strong droughts. I, I've never seen a, a red bud, you know, kind of wilt or anything like that, but it will definitely like to um, have its roots shaded. So if you look to my right, right over here, that is the south side of my yard. Um, so the sun does face that all day long it just cooks it bakes but um the way it's uh looking right now it's just telling me it's super happy where it's at because it uh it does have its shaded roots this is one of those um red buds it's kind of the what you'll see along interstates and highways in wooded areas you won't see really the trunk of it but it actually is hiding the trunk to hide the roots where the sun will uh bake it so it gets tucked back in there and then you see the canopy out you know amongst the uh rest of the tree line so anyway super no fuss area uh tree in my area so uh, again zone 6a kansas so make sure and do your due diligence but uh when you're when you're researching one of these it doesn't even need water so if you have a boggy area or uh, an area that gets a lot of moisture that's definitely not your go but if you have a dry situation and you're kind of just an early spring um, gardener this is ideal for your garden okay and this beauty right here is a perfecta juniper it grows about 18 feet tall depending on your area again it's not one of those things that just because i tell you that's what it grows like here doesn't mean it's going to grow like that in your zone um, do your research but it gets about 18 feet tall um, about eight foot wide and so this is a really special spot for this tree because i am trying to block out the neighborhood behind me uh, kind of kind of enclosing my uh, space in doing so though I will tell you that when you're planting um, tree rows and trying to give yourself privacy I've learned and I learned this from hort tube really really um, early on and but after I had already um, planted up that side of my garden so over there I have Leland Cypress and I made like a run of like seven or eight well what I've learned from uh, Hort tube, um, Jim Putnam, is that you want to plant different trees so that if you do have a bug, a disease, something that comes along and wipes one out, if you have a long row of them, you're going to wipe out your entire row. So um, cannot stress enough that is the most important fact I've learned when trying to grow a hedge. If I'd have known that earlier, I wouldn't have planted all those cypress or those um, Leland cypress back there. Um, that being said, I did go with some things. Uh, multiple uh, trees in this section and learn from what I learned from him um, but yeah this is a really super uh, no fuss tree I will tell you it grows in a pyramid shape not everybody's in in that kind of uh, mindset they kind of like it to be 
more proportionate and grow out you know heavy on the top as well to give you the privacy above but i will tell you the only thing that has ever happened to this tree and you can see it's grown out of it is that if i have any kind of male dog that comes over here and urinates anywhere on that those those branches will turn um, yellow and it'll look dead and then it'll turn brown sometimes black but it it significantly jumps right out of it and um, back to normal and you will never even know the difference so I can't see any cons in this, honestly. It does not put off any berries or anything. It's basically just what you see. And it still looks so good and so strong during the winter and holds up really well with the snow. Sometimes we get some heavy, heavy snows and I tell you, it, it bounces back and it really never actually has any issues with the heavy snow. So um, I'm really happy with this choice. So good, 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 uh, good addition to the garden. Perfected juniper. So I'll take you on to the other side, but I wanted to kind of give you a look at what I was talking about with adding multiple um, trees and shrubs to give you kind of a break from the neighbors. Um, but I will tell you this next one, Hollywood Juniper, is super nice. I like the whimsical look. If you come over here, you can really see how the um, branches get twisted and turned and they kind of go in all kinds of directions really nice tree it's uh 15 by 10 it gets about 15 foot tall about 10 foot wide um super great addition to this garden I, i'm super excited about it i know i've used super a lot but when i get to talking about my my yard and the trees and stuff i think everything's super you know and i've i've heard a long time ago that if everything's um special then nothing can be special um i can agree with that a little bit but i feel like this is super special to me so let's go to the other side and we'll take a look at it so you can see from this angle how it really kind of has all these different branches going all over like i said gets twisted it does put off the berries so what i learned a long time ago that those actually um originally they think those were actually cones and then they turned into that so that birds would um, find those to look like berries so that they would you know carry these um these berries off and then continue to sprout once they um, did their thing and perhaps maybe I'm I, I but I'm 100% sure that's the way I learned it um, but I can tell you those berries don't get touched until like the last thing in the garden during the late winter um, if somebody's not feeding birds like I feed birds all winter long but if they're having um, a tough time finding stuff we'll we'll have that kind of be there and then all of a sudden You'll just see a mess of birds just fly in, take every berry off there that they can find, and then move on. But um, I, I'm glad I added this to this uh, garden because it just kind of offsets back here. You can see one that's just loving its space right there. I put these in, and I believe they were about five feet tall, maybe four feet tall. And now you can see from ground to the top that they are just loving this space this one is the newest one i put that in about three years after the other one so it's catching up quite quite fast you can see the difference there's probably about a three foot difference in the um to the left over here and to the right but it's a good addition to the garden i would say that if you have a larger landscape they will probably do better because then you can really see the structure of it where everything's kind of on top of one another to give me that privacy um, but again still looks really well really no fuss doesn't really turn brown it does get a little brown spots sometimes inside but other than that really they they really don't want a lot of water it's like everything that we're introducing to this, this garden i'm trying to get it to be a no fuss no no um situation where i have to go out there and baby it but you can see just standing here um, that all this has just turned out so well and actually everything kind of complements one another and it gives me that privacy you can see i was standing over there a while ago on the sidewalk and you can't even see the sidewalk you barely see a house um, across the street now when i'm telling you if you're new to landscaping if i'm telling you um, that something gets 10 foot wide so if we pretend like this is the tree trunk the main tree trunk consider this the center point you can go five feet this way and five feet that way and that gives you your 10 foot uh your 10 feet or um you can continue to add on so if it gets 20 obviously it's going to be 10 right off of there and 10 off of there so that's how you get your 20 feet if you're trying to figure out where to plant your tree specifically so uh, hopefully that's a good kind of um, idea where to set your trees when you're doing that because you will have property lines um, 
Some neighbors don't like you to add things that will grow into their yard or over their fence or touch their property. So uh, when choosing to plant a tree in a space, definitely do, do your research and figure out how much space you're actually needed. So let's move on to this pretty little white barked tree. This is a white spire birch. They tend to get really tall. Um, this one's gonna get about 40 feet tall if it's in that happy space. And it gets about, what did I put down? Uh, 26 feet wide. So again, you're going right off of a center trunk. Oh, uh, here we are. So we're going off a center trunk. And so you're, you can figure 26, you do your division. You can see what, what ends up on both sides. There are three trunk or four trunks to this one. When I was purchasing this, this was my first purchase in this landscape in this front yard and when i purchased it um the gentleman that was there at the nursery told me that eventually one of the four will die off i'm not sure um if that's something that happens your area but uh, he strongly suggested that um, i didn't lose faith in this tree because eventually one will die off and i'm hoping that it's one that's not the one in the front because i think it does really well underneath as a saint john's wort and it's proof to actually get along really well with this birch and surprisingly so thinking that this is going to suck up most of the water but actually they play really nice um, another element to this garden um, you can see all of the evergreen color and i i continue to have this all winter long all this stuff plays well with the snow no fuss again but one of the things i like to add is that white bark to kind of break up all the green and I think it's working out pretty well. The um, St. John's wort that's below it, I do have a little bare spot and you know, a lot of people suggested to cut it all the way back down and, and let's see if it comes back up. It's hard for me to do that even though that's an ugly spot and um, that wasn't like that last year and it only happened when it started to leaf out this year. So um, I have to talk myself into it for next spring but I didn't want to kill off all the blooms this year. So. I think it looks really well right here. You got a little le little yellow, little white bark, and then the evergreen color. And then, of course, down here, somebody's going to ask. Those are Shasta daisies. They're just getting ready to go out of bloom, and I can start cutting those back to um, get me a second uh, flush. A um, couple hostas under here that have been here for quite some time. I need to get those out of the ground. You guys ever do that? Purchase something and then never really get, get around to getting it into the ground? That is me. I'm carrying plants around nonstop. Let's move on down to this path. So right here, this bright blue is a Colorado blue spruce. They'll get quite tall um, and quite wide. So I am guilty of sometimes going for color and going for, I can walk in somewhere and if, if it speaks to me and I'm super excited, I'll grab it and then I go home and I'll carry it around trying to figure out what location I'm gonna put it in and never really um, tell myself that, hang on, you don't have that big of a lot. You need to pump the brakes and do your research. It. So when I tell you to do your research, do your research, don't do like me and buy on impulse and you won't end up in a situation where, you know, 15, 20 years down the road, you're going, oh no, what do I do? So um, this is one of my favorite trees because that blue just looks so good right back here. And then you can see right under here, I've got the black eyed Susans and the little drift rose, but I really like lead, having this path lead going back there and then you can see all the blue again. It's the blue on the green, on the white bark, everything just plays so well together. It's one of my favorite spots. If someone was to ask me what's my favorite spot in the garden, this little pathway here, this front landscape is just super special for me. Again, there you go with the special, but it's something that I really enjoy because there's so much color and then if you can just look through here and you can just see all the different colors. and textures back there it's just one of my favorite spots of the garden so this is technically not a tree this is a double file um, viburnum and what it, why i'm showing you this is because it does look like a tree because i've limbed it up you can see i need to get a couple more of those out of there um, that comes with you know just touring your garden and seeing what uh what jumps out at you but yeah so i just limb this up these uh you can see the colors on here. Looks like I might need to get some uh, get some iron on this, but uh, nonetheless, there it's got a rough texture to it, and 
in the spring it puts off these little white flowers on the top so if you're a bird you get to see the beauty in that if you're at, down here at my angle you're probably not going to get to see it so much but i think it looks really sharp it blooms out for about a week um, but really what i'm using it for this is a fast grower super fast grower and i really like that um, bone structure i always use bone structure when i'm talking about these so um, i really like having the multi-stem now one thing i could do is you can see um, let me see if I can move this with you guys. Yeah, see this? So it's it's actually touching right there. Oh, sorry about the blur. It's actually touching right there. So what I technically need to do is go and get that one that's coming across here, get that off of there so it's not rubbing up against the other one and allow for uh, disease and insects to get in there. But um, this will this little viburnum will get eight to 10 feet tall. Right now I'm thinking it's at almost 10 feet. That top peak is probably at nine, nine and a half. And it'll get a 9 to 12 foot spread. These guys are, viburnums are one of the best no fuss um, shrubs, trees, whatever you want to call it uh, in, in this zone. So again, when I'm telling you stuff that works for me, might not work for you, but that, those viburnums, I just have never lost a viburnum, period. Even when I was just beginning out as, as a beginning gardener and didn't know what the heck I was doing, I've never still lost a viburnum. Um, again, this is another fu no fuss um, addition to the garden. So uh, I would like to know: Does anybody has anybody had any issues with the viburnum? I think it's pretty darn simple. I think they just do their thing. But you can see here, I'm not sure. Maybe one of you guys can tell me. See the difference in the leaves right there? So I don't know. Something's going on, and I'm just not um, wise enough yet to uh, have the information for you. So. Drop that in the comments if you see why that's um, have a discoloration in the, the leaves. This actually looks really cool, but I'm sure that means it's not healthy. Who knows? Somebody will tell me. Somebody's had some luck and some information and lost a couple things along the way, and that's how we learn, correct? Underneath here, I would have thought that nothing would really grow because this gets so shaded um, during the day. It gets a couple hours, but uh, I've got a lot of stuff going on. I've got a still be under here. I've got the... Um, uh, lamb's ears got some hosta some hookra yeah so uh, some coleus there's a lot of things going on and and um just still continues to uh, be remarkable that i don't have to come through here this is probably my least watered area besides over by the pond um, you can see on this side there's still just so much going on and everything just seems happy i really don't even come over here and water all right let's go to the next so right by this double file viburnum we've got a weeping white pine it will grow 15 about 15 feet tall if it's happy it'll get six by 12 um wide but it's hard to tell you which direction you can you can see here's the main trunk right here and then if i swing you around nice and slow like uh, you can see part of it's growing on the fence and going in a different direction because it wants a little bit more space but it's just gonna have to be happy here. I can remember when I first planted this um, tree in the garden, it was one of the, I think the second thing that viburnum wasn't there so you could really see it because the garden was still um, very new. And so when neighbors would walk by and people go, oh my God, look at that ugly Charlie Brown tree. And I was like, hey, hang on a second. It's got feelings, you know, I'm like this, this is a fun little um, win for me. So uh, now people are like, what's that funky tree back there? So. I think it's a great addition. It would like a lot more space. Does it drop its needles? No, no, not not really. You can see here, if I bring you down, you can see the ground. I And I put bark, what, two months ago? So I put that mulch down there and you can see there's no needles down there. In the winter time, it will throw off a little bit. You can see these little cones here. Let me come in slow. I'm kind of a fast paced guy, so I have to remember to slow these videos down, but Aren't those cute? Let me bring you up here to another one. And so I think in it puts off about almost a foot a year. So right where those cones are right there, all the way out to here, that's about a foot. And that's what it's put off just this spring. They're not going to, it's not going to blow your socks off when you, uh, when you plant one of these, they're not going to, all of a sudden you're not going to wake up and it's in the way. Uh, it's it's taken some time. This is just a branch that comes down. I bought it kind of willy-nilly knowing that it's it's funky And that's what I kind of wanted somebody to 
when you're touring this uh, back pathway to kind of stop and pause and ask questions about it on hey what's going on I don't want you know when somebody visits the yard or um, fam whether it's fam family or friends visiting the yard to be in such a rush to get through it and see what's next I want everybody to kind of have a reason to stop and pause and uh, this is one of those stop and pause moments right so super fun um, I will tell you that everything I have shown you is not messy and what I mean by that there's no needles really dropping down there's no um, branches really to fall down I do have um, this viburnum it's gonna lose its leaves and then I'll have that woody structure throughout the the winter but uh, and it kind of gives me a yellow leaf during the fall but nothing super showy um, but all in all all this whole area is no fuss I'll rake up these leaves and um, kind of get them under the mulch I don't I keep the I like to keep all the and if you followed me in the very beginning um, I'll mulch all this stuff up and break it down so it's uh, a little bit finer and I'll I'll put it down before I put the mulch and stuff down but yeah really ultimately there's nothing really I have to clean up in this garden um, with these trees so again weeping white pine tree fun okay okay right here um, I've got my back to, oh, you can hear the bird, the turtle does coming into nest. They do that in the Colorado blue spruce I've had. Every year I've had nest in there, multiple nests. So that's another fun element to having tr multiple trees in your garden. Um, things start to get comfortable and start to live in your, your, uh, your landscape. Um, right here though, I have the purple leaf sand cherry. They get about seven feet tall, about 10 feet wide. These are no fuss as well. Now I will tell you, um, the Japanese beetles have invaded our space in the last four or five years, and we'll do a number on here. So they're just terrible little critters, and there's not much I can do about it because I don't like to spray the garden. Because when I spray the garden, if I was to spray the garden with anything, I'm getting rid of all the bees and the hummingbirds and so much more, and um, dragonflies. I have a ton of dragonflies. Uh, which also means I have a ton of mosquitoes because that's what they um, eat off of. But I, I just hate those little critters. There's, there's always that insect that's in, it's everybody's nemesis. And um, those Japanese beetles just happen to be mine. Anyway, this looks super good. I will tell you uh, one thing I'm not really impressed with is after a rain, this, um, th it will sag and it will hang down. I've, I've done a... Um, a video and posted it on Instagram and uh, of just kind of a little tour through here and I can tell you it was just merely f a foot off of the uh, off of the sidewalk here but nonetheless once you shake it off a little bit or it dries out it just it it goes back to the space it was it was at prior and it's a nice little bush to have um, no berries I don't have any berries off of it I again no fuss really I mean if you want to talk about the water uh, the heavy rains weighing it down again summertime I don't really get any rain in the spring and fall so um, I don't know I don't have to water it again super no fuss area so uh, that's one of the great things about this whole pathway and if you can look through here um, when I'm adding so much to the garden before I even knew anything about you know styles and and um the different elements and ideas that come with uh, design like i'm I, I didn't know much about design and i'm still not a hundred percent some people will tell me i had an individual and this isn't to pick on anybody i had an individual comment one time a year two years ago and say that uh, it made her nauseous looking at my garden because it didn't make sense and i was like oh that's so hurtful but hey it's it's their opinion but i just thought what what, what am i doing wrong why does it not look but anyway, um, I lost a little bit of sleep over it, but hey, I bounced back and here we are today. But I will tell you that um, for not having any kind of design or idea what we're doing uh, here in this garden in the beginning, um, it's worked out well. Now, I'm leading up to a point because not everything's uh, peachy and rosy. So right here I have the Cypress Arizona Blue Ice. Um, it gets very tall and very wide. Um, I will come around. You can see it gets um, a little brown inside because it's, it really like, would like a lot more sun than I'm giving it. So in the beginning when I started planting this stuff and, you know, I find a cell and I grab a tree, I grab a shrub, I, give, I grab a perennial, an annual, whatever it is because it's on the cheap because I'm winning through buying at a discount. I run into the idea that when I'm purchasing a plant or one of those... Um, 
cheap buys that I have an idea when I get to the to the garden where I might want it. Well, then it never works out like that, right? So I'll get home and I'll be like, no, I don't really like it there. Let me find somewhere new. And ultimately what happens is I force myself to want it and force myself to find a spot. So this is one of them. So this um, blue ice is not particularly in the right spot. I'm a little too close to the home. Um, they don't have like invasive roots or anything, uh, but they do like a little bit of water and because of the expansion and contraction right close to the house. We'll see, we'll see how it turns out. I'm a little, little mad at myself that I didn't do my research. Like I tell you, do your research. But if I flip around here, um, you'll see how green it is and pretty um, that, or blue. It's got that blue tint to it and I really like that. I've got another one in the backyard. But I will tell you that um, I might have buyer's remorse somewhere down the road because I, I, it might be in the wrong spot. Um, but hey, it is what it is. Well, we, again, this is how I learned. And if I was ever to move, like my my idea is to move to the country one day and own a lot of bunch of or own some land, and just kind of get to do free willy, do what I want, be who I am. Then I will learn from the mistakes I made in this garden and be able to carry that over, right? You just live and learn. So let me let me flip us around. Okay, so maybe the light will play a little bit better. Now you can see inside, it's got the the brown. I'm not 100%. I guess I could research that. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I know it's not dying, but I know it's not happy because it wants a little bit more sun. And so I can just go in there and I can rub my hand on that and all those little bristles fall to the ground you can see i've already done that could i hide it from you guys and not share yeah i could or could i not have even shown you this tree and perhaps this mistake sure but then i'm not being true and real to to the folks that are following this channel um there's you know we've got to be able to share our wins and our losses right so this might actually be one of my bigger mistakes we'll see down the road but uh, I'm super happy with it. I have trimmed it back. Otherwise, some of the branches will be over to here. And I think right now it's just, it's doing okay. And it's actually, I think it's doing great. Like I said, it's gonna get like 40 to 50 feet tall. And I'm not sure if my mind was wrapped around that. It was an impulse buy. I was younger, making decisions and wasn't really planning on, you know, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. But. We shall see. I can continue to limb it up. That's one thing that's great about this um, tree is that I can cut it back and it and it'll accept it. Like it, there's no fuss about it. Again, no real um, insects or disease in my zone that uh, that affects this tree along with all the other ones. But I think I think ultimately that's where we'll stop today. It's a lot of information and. Um, I just we can get carried on and this video ends up being really long but we'll do like a part two maybe a part three um maybe per, no you know what let me run over to the west side of the home and i'll show you some of the trees that we've got over there okay i decided to come up on the porch where my wife and i will sit and have some morning coffee sometimes before the neighborhood wakes up but you can see um just all the privacy that space gives us right and then i'll pan you around and so I, I don't see anything going on over there. When we first moved in, we seen everything. So kind of gives us a little bit of privacy. Um, this is a pin oak right here. They are very slow growing, but they are bug and in, or insect resistant like no other. Like they are so well um, behaved and do so well in this garden. I wish that if I ever moved to the country, I would probably plant um, several more of those, but I will tell you they are very, very, very slow growing. I'm gonna move this down because we have some children coming through. All right, and so over here, like I said, when I'm sitting on this porch, I can see, uh, we used to be able to see everything, all the homes and all the neighborhood over there. And I kind of just wanted to block everybody out. Our neighbor does have a couple pin oaks over there that work out well. Um, it does give us some shade in the evening. The sun sets right back there. In fact, it's sitting back there further because um, as the summer goes, the, it, the longer the sun stays in the sky and the further it sets back. So in the wintertime, it will go down about right there. Summertime, it's about right over there. So I've got some dappled willow here. 
if I wanted to, I can let it grow to be 10 or 15 feet tall, but uh, I'll kind of hedge that up like I do over there. So kids are gone. Hate to put anybody's children on here and not be accepted. So one thing I do want to share with you guys, you guys know me and my imagination. You guys see the face? Eye, eye, mouth. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Okay, so if the lighting's playing well, this is the Leyland Cypress that comes all the way through here. I've got one, two, I've got like six or seven. Again, first time I'd planted any kind of trees on this side of the yard, and I planted it very early on, about nine years ago when we moved in, so I didn't have the knowledge of adding different trees and to a um, divider or from you and your neighbor. Um, one thing I had learned after I bought these on the cheap is that it it it's only a matter of time before these guys die um, because of insects or um, disease. And I guess that's just the way it is in our landscape or in this area. I don't know about your area, but you can see here I've already got it turning brown. Uh, I've kind of just left it there because I'm too lazy to uh, take it out, I guess. And um, but it's eventually it will. It's going to this whole area is going to. Uh, say kapoops and be gone with it which is so sad because i really like this garden um, space back here again it's crazy that as as beautiful as the backyard um, is to everyone these are kind of some of my favorite spots up here if you recall we had planted this area up right here recently and it's doing super well right now those remember that hosta i moved from back over here where it was only getting like 30 minutes of sun um, it did get roasted a little bit, but it's, it's super healthy. It, those blooms were not there, so I think it's going to be okay. Got a Japanese ma maple right here that is a blood good. Caught some flack because I did um, butcher it a little bit down here. But uh, I had to make room for the azaleas, and it's going to be a wonderful tree in the end. It's going. I can't wait because it's actually going to branch out and come clear over here, and it'll share all that space. And then, like I said, if these uh, cypress end up... Um, dying out eventually then it is what it is and it wasn't meant to be and we'll get we'll get it corrected down the road got a couple more viburnums over here I'm probably not gonna limb it up because behind it is the air conditioner unit I've got several maples and stuff in the backyard we'll tour that again um, soon if you're asking what that is uh, that is a smoke bush and then we have the green giant arborvitae that's going to I've already planted it there to start replacing the cypress when it decides to um, leave this area. The neighborhood is starting to pop firecrackers, so I do apologize. Look how well, if you remember, if you're new to this, I just uh, did, planted that up this area, but I did move that um, driftwood forward, and I just absolutely love it. This is, like I said, this is one of my favorite spots, but I find I find beauty in the odd and the unique and look how look at all that if you haven't turned this off and you're still watching um, and you're into this kind of driftwood and different things isn't that a special piece I just absolutely love it got some lilies here it's just a lot going on in the garden and I'm really happy about it right now this one's just going to take off soon but I don't get over here very much to share with you folks because it seems like we're always doing something <laughs> in another part of the garden. But um, yeah, so a couple pointers I would tell you. Double check um, when you're planting something. See if it's uh, resistant. So here's what I've learned. If you go to um, a box store, you might be buying a tree that doesn't do so well in your area but they're not thinking about that when they're thinking about sales. If you go to a nursery, the nursery is not gonna sell you something that doesn't do well in that area. So I learned that um, because I I'd went to a gentleman that was um, selling at one of the landscape places. I was like, hey, does this do this? What do well here he said with all due respect we wouldn't sell you something that you'll um, return next year or ask me why it died so we're only going to sell you what we know does good here so going to nurseries your your best luck if you're going to box stores double check make sure take your time and uh, go on youtube um, go on google double triple check to make sure that those trees and shrubs are going to do good for you in that area. You can see how um, I'm getting the browning in here. Everything still looks good. I don't think I'm going to lose these anytime soon. Um, but yeah, anyways, to the point, just 
do your research i'd hate for you to go and put up a whole hedge of trees to block you and your neighbor out and it looks good for 10 years and then all of a sudden you get ready to sell your home right because the average time to own your home is what 10 11 years and then all of a sudden you go to sell your home and then you wake up and it's starting to turn right so or if you're planning on living there for a long time um you lose out because um, we didn't do our research so just do yourself and do your research um, plus your neighbors will like you better if you don't plant something that's going to die soon anyways thank you guys for watching i hope this um answers a lot of questions about some of the trees again this is just the front landscape the back landscape has a ton more trees we'll go through some of the pros and cons um, again hopefully this answers some of your questions if you uh like what you're seeing hit the like hit the subscribe make sure and hit that notification tell your friends and share about it so um, thank you guys again we'll talk to you soon Bye bye